So today we're going to walk through how you can deploy your Crew AI project step by step on the cloud. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to get access to this code so you can download this project, deploy it on Streamlit Cloud, and any changes you make to it, you'll be able to pretty much just make this project your own. So if you watched my previous video, we talked a little bit about the concepts that we'd be covering or just more or less the logic that we're following in order to do this. I try to make my videos as beginner friendly as possible, so I like to cover some of the core concepts and principles before I start implementing a tutorial. But just for a quick recap, basically what we're doing is we're taking the code that you wrote for your Create AI project, we're gonna be uploading it to GitHub, or in this case, we're gonna make changes to the code template that we have, and then we're gonna upload it to GitHub. GitHub is pretty much gonna be where your code lives, where it's gonna be hosted, and pretty much when you deploy it on Stream Day Cloud, it's gonna reference the code in your GitHub repository in order to load up the app. So instead of your app loading up from within your laptop when you've been running it on the other projects that you've been working on, the app is gonna load up from within the Stream Day Cloud. That way you'll be accessible through the internet to other users. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to this repository page and we're not gonna select the main branch that you have here. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and go to this deployment test branch. Now. This branch was modified to work with the deployment requirements for Streamlit. There are a couple of things that I had to change compared to the previous project, but again, you'll have access to this code. So if you want to modify it, make the changes to your agents, you'll still be able to use this and deploy it and it'll work with Streamlit. So once you go to this deployment test branch, you're going to go over here to this option on the right that you see that says fork. Basically, this gives you an option to make a copy of the code that I have and load it into your GitHub account. And that way, whenever you make changes, you can upload them and it won't affect the original code at all. So we're going to select this fork option and then create new fork. Here you can call it whatever you want. Let's just call it streamlit crew video. And we're going to go ahead and choose the owner. It's still going to be me. I'm not able to choose the owner here because it is my repository originally. But when you select it here, this is basically what's going to save my code to your GitHub account. So once you make the fork copy on your GitHub account, we're going to download this to your machine so that you can edit any changes you want. And then I'll show you how you can upload the changes you make back up to your account so that you can deploy it on Streamlit Cloud. So what you're going to want to do first is go to this section right here that says code and then copy this link to clipboard. You're going to open a new folder here on your VS code. And here in this new folder, you're going to go to terminal, new terminal. And this is where we're going to start typing our git commands in order to download this repo. So it's going to be git clone and then the link we copied earlier. As you can see here, we're able to download the code to our computer. And just to be clear, the command you're going to use is going to be git clone dash b deployment test because deployment test is the name of the branch that we're going to be using and then you're going to put here the link to the github repository that you copied so you do have to emphasize this branch in order to use the version of the code that has everything set up in order to be deployed so now that you have your own version of the code i'm going to show you how you can deploy this on streamlit cloud and then i'll show you how making changes from the code on your computer on vs code you'll be able to upload these changes in order to see them on your application that you deployed so you're going to want to go to streamlit cloud cloud you can go ahead and click get started. If you haven't already done so, it's gonna ask you to make an account. And what I would recommend you do is to just make an account by linking Streamlit to GitHub. There's a free tier and you won't be charged anything. As you can see right here, this is showing the application that I showed you earlier in the video, which I already tested and launched. But when you start, you're gonna go ahead and go to new app because it is linked to your GitHub repository. From here, you can already see which repo you wanna select in order to launch your project. In this case, we're going to select the Streamlit Research Crew. And then from here, you're going to select the branch that you want to use. Now we're going with the deployment test. So let's go ahead and select that one here. Then here it asks you what the main file path is. For us, it's going to be Streamlit underscore app. And then here, in case you want to do a custom URL, you're able to select that as well. One more thing I want you to add before you deploy is you're going to go to advanced settings here. And here you can select the Python version you're going to use. I just left it at 3.11, but this is where you're going to enter your API keys, both for OpenAI and Serper. And the format for typing this, it gives you an example, but again, you want to type it without any errors. So it's just going to be all capitals, OpenAI underscore API key. Same thing for your SERP API key. Make sure you don't leave any spaces and make sure your actual API key 
goes here between the two double quotations. This way, instead of you having to type in your API key in the files like we were doing for some of the earlier projects, Streamlit is going to be able to load this up without exposing it to anyone. And one more thing, once you do start uploading code to GitHub, generally, if you have an API key on your file, you're going to get an error because again, they want to prevent people's API keys from getting stolen just to make sure that everyone's information stays as safe as possible. And once you do this, you're going to go ahead and click deploy. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time to set up the first time, but here at the bottom right, where it says manage app, you can click that and you'll be able to see the logs of everything that's being installed, just like with our Google Colab notebook or even our local installations. Whenever we install the dependencies, you know, that took a little bit of time. So that's very similar to launching it on Streamlit Cloud. But once you start deploying your own applications, making projects all on your own and deploying them, this is pretty much where you're going to want to look at in case you're getting errors or in case your deployment is failing. And I want to point out that when it comes to deployments like this, one of the most important parts that's going to play a role on whether your deployment fails or, you know, successfully launched is going to be the file from which all your dependencies are being extracted. In this case, for our particular project, we're using a .toml file. And this is basically what tells the deployment software what it is, what are the packages, libraries that it needs in order to run properly. Earlier when I was trying to do this on my own, I did run into some errors. Again, because there was things that I installed separately outside of using the .toml file. But with some Googling, some ChatGPT, and looking into the Streamlit forms, I was able to get my issues resolved. And just like that, you can see here that we've been able to deploy our application. Now, let's say you want to change something in the title, like Research Crew Setup. That's not what your project is. Maybe you already thought of a different idea of what you, what you want to do, what you want to call it or you already made some changes in the code that we downloaded. That's perfectly fine. You can make the changes using VS Code, but then you need to upload those changes to GitHub in order to make sure that your application that is now deployed in Streamlit displays the changes that you made. So let's say we wanna change this to, you know, local restaurant finder. All we would have to do is again on VS Code, we would go to our Streamlit file. This part right here is what shows the title. As you can see right here, it says Research Crew Setup. And right here at the top of our app, it says Research Crew Setup. So this is the part in our file where we would change that. And let's just call it Local Restaurant Finder. And you know, we click Save, but that doesn't directly change anything within our Streamlit file because we haven't uploaded our code to GitHub. Now, the way you're gonna do this is first, you wanna check what files have changed in your repository. You can do this with just git status. Well, first we wanna move into the folder that has our repository. So let's go ahead and do CD and our folder is just called Streamlit Research Crew. So now we're in the folder that has the code. So let's go ahead and do get status. And we can see here that this file in red has been modified. That's why it's highlighted red and says modified. So we wanna make sure that the next time we upload code to GitHub, we add the changes that we made to this file. We're gonna do this by typing git add and then the file name which in this case, just streamlit underscore app dot pi. And if you don't want to type out the entire file, just start typing the file name and then press tab and it'll fill it for you. And again, let's go ahead and click get status one more time. Now that it's green, it basically tells us that the changes we made to this file have been accounted for. They haven't been added to the repository, but the next time we do add it, we will see these changes in our code. So the next step that we need to do is we need to commit our changes. Committing is what you do one step before actually pushing your code to GitHub. Whenever you do git add, which we did a little bit earlier, we're basically just making a list of the changes that we want added to our next commit. When we do a git commit, we're basically bookmarking all these changes into one big chunk. And that's basically going to be a checkpoint for what's going to be pushed next time we push code to our repository. I know maybe it seems a little bit nuanced right now, but those are the basics of pushing code to GitHub. You're gonna git add the changes you make. You once you're ready to bookmark a group of changes that you want to be applied together, you're gonna do a git commit. And after you do your git commit, then you're actually gonna push it to your GitHub repository. So now let's go ahead and do git commit. And then we're gonna use this flag called dash M in order to type out a message for what our commit is. And it's just gonna be dash M and we're gonna put, basically you just wanna put a description of the changes that you're applying. So we're just gonna put changed title and here it shows you a little log that it made one file change one insertion one deletion so now we can actually push the code up to our github repository so each time you push you want to emphasize what branch it is that you're pushing to because as you start building out these projects you're probably going to have different versions of what you're changing so just to stay consistent i think it's good practice to actually put the whole command which in this case would be git push origin deployment test 
And you can see right here, like I was showing you earlier in this diagram, the code that is being hosted in GitHub is basically what Streamlit is running in the cloud in order to launch your application. As you saw right here, as quickly as we made those changes within our code, we're able to see them within our app. So there you have it guys, a fully functional crew AI project that is also deployed online. So now you can show it off to your friends, family, companies, investors, whatever you want. You can confidently say it's a fully working prototype. And now you don't have to run around with your laptop to show people the cool things that Crew AI can do. And one more thing, just to make sure that people aren't using up your API key, since you're gonna link it to this application, make sure you go to your settings here. And then within settings, you're gonna to go to sharing and you're gonna set this to private, to where only people that you send this to will have access to it. Or again, if you're not actively testing it or using it, you could just delete it and deploy it again later. To some extent, we really only touch the surface for new concepts such as version control, that is using the get commands, git add, git commit, git push, in order to save the code in GitHub. And we also, again, went over deployment. In this case, because of Streamlit, we're able to, it was pretty much a one-click thing. And again, in this project that you're using, I went through the headache of dealing with all the dependency errors for you. Basically, so you could just get this, run it, and if you wanna make changes to it, you're more than welcome to, and you won't have as much trouble. But like anything else, the more obstacles you run into, the more you kind of learn how to fix them on your own, the better you're going to be able to get at these technologies, period. And also want to give a quick shout out to the person I talked to that suggested this for the tutorials, because again, it's been very helpful for me, and I thought it would be very helpful for you guys. So I decided to do these series of tutorials with this technology so that you guys could also benefit from it. Let me know in the comments what other technologies you would want to learn about, what other concepts that maybe weren't too clear in this series or in this tutorial i'm always more than happy to try to break it down to try to showcase it in a more clear or maybe a little bit of a slower pace if it's needed and again if you guys have any technical questions or you just want to set up some consultations for the project that you're trying to build in the comments i can have my Cali link so we can book a one-on-one -on -one video call thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one